Hello, this is Dave Hammer. Today we're going to talk about building the Cricut Air Hammer. All videos and pamphlets produced by David Hammer are copyright protected. The Cricut videos are available on YouTube for free viewing at this time. I do not give permission for the content to be downloaded nor used for any commercial gain. Metalworking projects require the use of shop equipment. Please exercise caution when using machines. These videos are offered without accepting any liability for your experiences. Your safety is your sole responsibility. This video is the third in a series that provides information about how the original Cricut Utility Air Hammer was built. This episode covers the construction of the ram assembly. This is the ram assembly. It includes the guidance system. These are the original Cricut ram part sizes. This video will show the use of a 6 inch piece of solid square 4x4 instead of a 4 inch piece for the ram. I recommend the ram be cut from the same stock as the anvil. This is to ensure the same size. This is a preview of how the RAM assembly will be put together. First, we remove the scale on the sides that will have contact with the tower. Uh, this could be accomplished with an acid bath of some kind. I milled the bars to the proper width for the ram assembly, the one inch bars. I sized it for one sixteenth of an inch clearance. Then I milled out a cavity on the two one inch bars for the gibbs. The depth would be determined by how you design your gibbs. I'm going to assemble this again just to double check um, the, the milling I've done. This just takes a second and gives me a little peace of mind. I'm actually going to be showing a, a different uh, or an alternative um, way to do this. Gibbs slide down in and then there'll be a retainer made a little bit later to hold that top down. I'm going to show uh, an alternative to this. Instead of using those one inch bars and milling, milling, you could use a piece of half inch angle iron. Um, and I actually like this better because the gibbs would be full width rather than just a slot. Uh, if you wanted to, although you don't need to, you could put this, uh, put a piece in the corner so the gibbs were the same sizes. I actually like this better. And I actually made a small hammer with this uh, exact design. It worked really well. As I have stated, I use 3 8 inch brass for the gibbs. If you decide to use high density plastic, which actually I recommend for your gibbs, you will need a metal backing for them and space for the backing. Next, we'll prepare components for welding the ram assembly together. Clamp the assembly together as if you were going to weld it. Here you're looking at the front of the ram. Be sure that you have those die holes positioned properly. Clamp these angle irons on first. Use a perfectly square bar in here, like a, a cold rolled square. Part of your tower actually would be good. This angle is the most important. Notice the angles that come down from the top of the assembly. Mark where those angles are on the angle iron pieces. Use a Sharpie and mark where the bevels need to be ground for welding. Then remove the clamps. Cut these angles with the bandsaw. And if you don't have a bandsaw, a zip disc would work well for that. Then Grind the bevels for welding and grind these deep. This is important. 
These welds are going to probably take the most stress on the whole hammer during operation. Assemble the components again for, for a review of bevel placement and depth. If angle iron width is excessive, cut it to proper width. I chose to grind this after welding and, and regretted it. Clamp the assembly together for welding. Remember that corner, that corner that's being tightened in right now is the most important. You want to triple check that 90 degree angle. Adjust the clamps if necessary. Also, it is critical that the angle iron lines up with each side of the ram. This ram is made of 4140, so it's necessary to preheat. I'll heat this to over 400 degrees before welding. The size of this, it took quite a while to do it. The ram could be mild steel. I use this infrared thermometer to be confident of the temperature. Tech weld all around the assembly. Little half inch welds all around. Use the clamps to uh, turn, but be careful that you don't pull any of them loose. Be patient here. Finish at least half of the welding before removing the clamps. Then remove all the clamps except one. You'll need that one for turning. Chip away the slag and then finish the welding all around. Inspect all the welds for integrity and fill in any imperfections if necessary. Check it all the way around. I use this grinder for the rough grinding, and this is where I wish I'd cut those pieces of angle iron closer to the right size. Uh, I then go to a belt sander and do finer grinding. If you're a professional level welder, this grinding would probably not be necessary. Round the corners, take the edge off. We're going to take a closer look, put in a piece of uh, bar that's the same as a tower just to check the clearance and put in the gibbs. The slots are actually kind of deep for these gibbs. I might have to put a backing in for them. Next we'll be drilling and tapping for gib adjusters and the grease zerks. This is the ram assembly from the original Cricut and it shows you where the gib adjusters and the grease zerks are. The zerks are in the center. There are zerks on the other two sides in the center also. Mark the centers of each of the pressure surfaces. Mark on the top and mark on the side. To mark the locations for the zerks and gib adjusters, draw a line down from where you made the marks at the top. Then grease zerks should be in the center of the pressure field on each side. Gib adjusters should be on the center line at one and three quarter inches from each end. Center punch all those marks, then drill three sixteenths inch pilot holes. You'll need a way to prop up the assembly when you're drilling on these sides. It's the center, so it's a, gre a grease zerk location, the gib location, gib adjuster location. Drill the center pilot holes out to 11.30 seconds in preparation for 1 8 NPT um, tapping for the zerks.
drill out the gib adjuster holes to 5 sixteenths for preparation for tapping 3 8 inch bolt holes. Tap the gib adjuster holes for 3 8 bolts. Tap the center holes for 1 8 NPT for Zerks on all four sides. I had to use an extender for my, um, for my tap here. Next we're going to make gib adjusters. We just use one and a half inch grade five three eighths inch bolts. Clamp it into a vise. Use a zip disc to cut a slot for our screwdriver for adjusting it. Cut it off at the thread line. This is hot, so you can't grab it by hand, or shouldn't. So you need to cut four of those. And then clean those ends up on a belt grinder. And finally, you just put nuts on them. This is our finished ram assembly. Next, we're going to build the Gibbs retainer. Mark some 1 8 inch plate to make the retainer. I drew around the assembly and then added the, the little 1 inch square. This is what I ended up with on the sheet metal. Cut it out with a bandsaw. And if you don't have a bandsaw, you can use a zip disc or a porter band. This is thin stuff. Then lay out this, the center. I kept marking this left side incorrectly. Not sure what I was thinking there. Yeah, I finally got it right. Use a zip disc to cut the center out. Be careful you don't color outside the lines. Use a little hex out to finish the cuts. And then a file to smooth it all out. Take the burrs off and square it up. We're going to put four bolts to hold this down. One in each corner. Drill eighth inch pilot holes. Then transfer those pilot holes onto the ram assembly. Hold the first one by hand. Then key into that first hole and drill the second one. And then key into that and then drill the other two. Transfer the other two. And drill those holes out to about three quarters of an inch deep using a number seven drill bit. And then enlarge the holes in the retainer to quarter inch for bolts. Then tap the rem assembly for quarter inch bolts. And then install a dummy tower in the gibbs. And then bolt on the retainer. And here we have a finished product. This is Dave Hammer. Thanks for watching.